Welcome back. I'm David the Good, and I'm gonna take you through and show you what's going on in the gardens. Eventually. The wheel hoe is really good for the, the long runs in a row garden. If you have flat ground and it's moderately loose, but you still have to kind of get in between by hand and get the bits and pieces out. Like amongst these green onions here. The great thing about weeding around the onions is it smells like good cooking every time you disturb them. It's not quite as good as tomatoes, but it's pleasant. I, I like the smell of onions. My little one-year-old daughter likes to come out and pick the leaves off the onions and eat them straight. That's my girl. So I'm starting over here because this is the least impressive part of my, my gardens. As you can see, <laughs> these radishes are a little bit past their prime. But, you know, we planted these things and then it got dry and it got hot and it got too cold and it just was back and forth and it rained a bunch and then it didn't rain for a long time, and then it rained a bunch. And so these things have gone through the winter, they survived, but they weren't that happy. Another thing is, is this area was an area that we didn't improve like we improved the rest of it. We're still getting, I mean, we got quite a few turnips out of here, but the radishes, they weren't great. They were bitter and small and they split a lot. Not impressive. Radishes like to be under good conditions the entire time they're growing and, and these were not. But I'm leaving them here because, as you can see, they're covered in blooms. And that's good for the pollinators. And I don't really need this space right now, so I don't care. The onions are doing fine. Nothing to write home about, but they're not crazy like pumpkins are, you know? They're not gonna sneak up to the back door and run us over if we're not paying attention. But I think they're gonna do fine. I always did better with the green onions than I have done with any of your uh, your big bulbing onions. They, they don't like me very much. But let's go and look at the part of the garden that looks cool. Because this is, this is okay, but this is not really what I want to show you. I don't even know why we're here. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. Let's get out of here. Come on. Let's go. Now we're in my favorite part of the garden, the grocery row gardens. This is the last one that we installed right here. And in it, down at the end, I cheated and I bought a couple of these pretty looking strawberry plants and popped them in here and they've, they've done quite well so far. These are the uh, husk tomatoes which we started, tomatillos, and you can see that the pomegranate is growing. And in between, you've got tomato and cassava right here. And I, I went out in the woods and I took the tractor and scraped up this big area of rotten wood. There were a bunch of rotten pine trunks out there. It's what I've been using for potting soil stuffing and all that sort of good stuff. And that's been the mulch that I've been putting down around these things. There's a lot of life in it. And we got some really good rains and it's a great time to mulch when the ground is already wet underneath because you can cover it up and hold that moisture in. You don't want to mulch when it's dry because then the mulch will keep the soil dry underneath and it'll actually block a little of the rain coming through. This is a good time to do it because it's soaking wet. And even though the soil here doesn't look like we did much to it, we tilled in, I tilled in a sack of alfalfa cubes like you would feed to horses. And I also tilled in about 50 gallons of charged biochar. Can't really see much. It's just lost in there, but it's in there. There's some little bits of charcoal in there, but you don't, you don't really see much. Year after year, we should build it up. This plum here has woken up and is very happy. It has a mate a little ways down here. Um, you know, despite all the issues with not quite having a greenhouse and time and everything, our transplants really came out quite nicely and they are, they're very happy. Even though you can see, look at this. Before I put down the mulch, it poured rain. And you see all the stuff stuck to the leaves? Look at that grit, it just sticks on there. That's another reason, if you mulch around under your tomatoes, it keeps all the dirt from flying up onto the leaves, which can also spread diseases and stuff. 
this area is about as far as we've gotten with the mulching. More, lots of tomatillos, another pomegranate, and then we're starting to get into hot pepper territory here. These little hot peppers. There's a prettier one over here. These little guys, we've got all kinds of hot peppers for the apocalypse. You never know when you're gonna need them. These tomatoes, we did not buy these transplants. These are our transplants that we grew and they are growing so fast. They are flying now. They like the rain. You can see we've got this charcoal here. This bed also had Steve's mix. You can see the soil is miserable stuff, really. But, you know, we're working on it. Once it gets mulched over, that'll help add organic matter. We've also got the alfalfa and the charged char in there, one bit at a time. Just keep adding things season to season. This is the mate to the plum tree. And then down around the base of this tree is where I stuck in sweet potatoes when I did my sweet potato demonstration not that long ago. It was a week and a half ago or so. And you can see those little shoots. Look at them, they're not wilted anymore. They're growing now, they look good. They're really starting to green up and look pretty. This right here is Tithonia diversifolia, the Mexican sunflower. This is a great nutrient accumulator chop and drop plant. We're gonna have to keep those under control because they get like 20 feet tall. Awesome. We'll use these because they're in this location and we'll baby them and we'll keep chopping them over and over and over again and using them to propagate for all over the rest of the yard. And then we got more, these husk tomatoes. They've already got little blooms coming in there. See the buds? It's beautiful. And now this being our last bed of all of them, this is not our prettiest bed. Our second to last bed here, which doesn't have any mulch on it yet, is not much to look at. <laughs> it's got little bits of cover crops on it. This is a chaste tree. Chase tree makes a really, really nice, nice bloom. It's got some medicinal applications. It's good for menopause. It's a pleasant tea. And the reason I want it is because it brings in lots of pollinators too. It's very pretty, beautiful purple flowers. So you could see all the char that we threw on here. This didn't even get tilled under. I just threw, chucked it on top of there. And in between, we have planted peppers, which need to be mulched. They're not mulched yet. And there's, there's really not, it's not a pretty bed yet. So we'll just take a quick look at it and then we'll move on to the next one. This is hazelnut here. I got a bunch of bare root hazelnuts. This is hazelnut row here. These are all hazelnuts um, every, I think I put them every 10 feet or so. There's a hazelnut, there's a hazelnut. The little tufts of grass are mostly rye and plus some of the turf grass that's coming back, which we'll just yank out and feed to the hazelnuts. The hazelnuts are just waking up. They're, uh, they're not particularly impressive yet. Down in this end, we got some cassava cuttings stuck into the ground. They're gonna love that char. We've also planted okra in patches in this bed and that's not come up yet. It's only been a couple of days. We planted it right before the rain, so it should be coming up real soon here. Hazelnuts are kind of marginal here in South Alabama, but we'll see how they do. And you can see we've got more transplants, some brassicas in here. I think these are uh, kohlrabis. They're either kohlrabis or broccoli. Probably kohlrabi. Now the beds are starting to get pretty. This is serious, pretty beds. Look at these guys. Now, these are my transplants. Uh, I think, no. These transplants I got from uh, the Mennonite farm store. And they were like 25 cents a transplant, so I got a bundle of them and I stuck them in here. And we did that a couple of weeks before it rained. So they're, they're finally really kind of catching. They weren't looking all that hot. I think we got the tail end of the transplants. Uh, but they were so cheap, it's like, ah, we'll do it, why not? Raspberry coming back here. That's one of the ones that we pruned back. And then these guys, I got, I bought these transplants. Those are red cabbages. So far, so good. I have seen the cabbage mods flying around, but 
they haven't they haven't destroyed anything yet. I'm watching for eggs and caterpillars. Generally, I do pretty well in the spring with them. At least I did in North Florida. So we'll see how they go. Now this right here is a raspberry that was not pruned and it came back fine. Don't know what the vigor is going to be like bit by bit. This one looks like it actually has some blooms forming here on the end. So we may get a little spring crop of raspberries off the unpruned ones. And what I've heard was is this variety, this heritage, I think will do a, it'll do a spring flush of berries and then it does a, a superior flush of berries in the fall. So if you prune them off in the spring, then you get the fall berries which are better and you get more of them. But we'll see. I don't mind a few so-so berries at the beginning. It's just exciting. Blueberry. Now I should have plucked, plucked all these blueberries off of here. These are getting ahead of me. They went into bloom and they just decided to run. But there's not a lot of berries on here. I'm gonna have to either pull them or I'll just ignore them. Let them keep growing. They look like they're growing out pretty fast. This soil here is ideal for blueberries. We have lots of blueberries growing wild in the woods. So um, I, I really don't think we will have to work at the blueberries at all. This peach has not woken up yet. If you see them like this, you wonder, is that thing, is that thing alive? You can nick it. See, it's a little bit of green right there. Just nick it with your thumbnail and you go, ah, oh, okay, it's still alive. Don't worry, it's just not left dormancy yet. This is probably a, a higher chill variety and it's not, it's not woken up, it's fine, it's okay. Here's another blueberry variety. Speaking of waking up, look at all those blooms. This is blueberry haven right here. And this is my berry row. So mostly berries all through this row with some vegetables in between, including these blackberries right here. And as you can see, these blackberries are getting ready to bloom. They are very, very happy. This bed is the one that uh, I think it got Steve's mix, plus it got a load of composted manure on it. So it's it's pretty happy. The bed behind me got the most love. It's got the most amendments so far, but we'll get to that. Look at this blackberry too. This is great. I love it. I mean, we're gonna get, I mean, we're already, look at, we're gonna get blackberries. This is so nuts. These things are growing so fast. It's beautiful. It's only gonna take a year or so for them to pay for themselves. We get another, we get a bigger crop this next spring. And I may or may not put a wire down here and let them run on the wire. I might just let them run on the ground. I've done it both ways. If you want to be like maximum production, you could go ahead and put wires on them like they do to pick or you can just let them run on the ground. I've done both. Now, this one here, I tip rooted. See, I jammed the end of this into the ground. So, let me see if I can show you running a risk here. Let's see. Do we have any roots yet? It okay, looks like it would start. No, maybe not. So what you do is you bury the ends of them and then over time they form roots. We'll reset that demonstration for another day. You didn't see that. Just imagine beautiful roots. Covered with roots. It was incredible. Get my book, Free Plants for Everyone, The Good Guide to Plant Propagation, to do it yourself. Except it'll actually work when you do it, because you're not on camera. <laughs> There's another one. So what happens is you bury the tip, and part of it starts to grow up, and then the other part, the buds beneath the ground, will start to form roots. So this is growing up, this is buried, this is gonna root in here. And then sometime later in the year, you can just snip this and dig this up and go plant it somewhere else. You can do this with your raspberries and your blackberries and it works very well. Just a little early in the season for that one, I think. If we come down here, you could see this pear really did not mind being pruned. It even decided to give us a few blooms. You'll notice also with pears early in the season, if it's really wet, you often get little brown spots and you get some bacterial dieback and stuff. This is not that big a deal unless you start to get some serious dieback. Like if the tips start to turn black, you need to cut that off because that is fire blight and that is a big problem with pears and it'll start to drip and spread through 
your pear plant and you really don't want that. But you often will get, especially when there's a lot of rainfall and there's brand new delicate growth, you'll get some little bacterial infections and some, some little brown spots and stuff, but it's no big deal. Don't worry about it yet. Down here on the ground, you can see the cannas that Rachel and I planted are really starting to fly. These are a chop and drop as well as being beautiful, as well as having edible roots and edible flowers, which are really nice in salads. Um, they're very pretty. And right alongside here, potato. And then we've got some chaya, Mexican tree spinach right here. This bed is the one with the most beautiful soil. You can also see that there's something in here that likes to eat brassicas. Look at these leaves. Something came along and nipped them off. But if we look into the soil here, this has biochar, this has uh, mold, leaf mold from the woods, this has alfalfa, this has Steve's mix. This is the one that I did the video on super improving your soil. And then of course it's all under mulch. And as I'm digging in here too, I'm finding worms, which is good. Blackberries, boy. We've got a variety of blackberries, University of Arkansas selections like Awachita and Arapaho, and those are great. These potatoes here came from the grocery store. I think most of these came from the grocery store. Occasionally I'm getting some dieback wilt. So when I see ones that look bad like this where they've got rot on them, I just yank them out. We don't want these. Sometimes they're big enough that they actually have some little potatoes at the bottom that are already edible. But I don't want the bacterial stuff to spread. And I got the seed for free. You're not supposed to plant seed from the grocery store, as they always tell you. But as you can see, most of them have turned out just fine. And I snuck some potatoes out of here the other day and they were delicious. We fried them, a friend of mine came over and one of them had started to die back with wilt. And so I dug around. I pulled it out and there was potatoes around the base of it, a bunch of little potatoes. And so we did that, pulled that one out and then I pulled another one out, just around the edge, kind of snuck a few, didn't pull it all the way, but just went around the edge and snuck a few potatoes out. And they were very, very good. There's nothing like new potatoes. This Dolgo crab apple, as you can see when I, when I trimmed it off, everybody, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you're gonna kill it. Look at this. This is eight inches of growth at least coming back just fine and it's going to be in a nice shrubby form like I want. Everything's looking good. Potatoes are surrounding the blackberries and then in between the potatoes see we've got our little asparagus coming up and we've got some brassicas here on the ground. Asparagus, very pretty. And the cannas and then down here Look at these, these are popcorn tree. You guys know these, this is one of the worst invasive trees. Now, they came in en masse. There's tons of them that have showed up here. But I've decided I'm going to leave some of them. Why would I leave something like this right in the middle of a bed with trees and vegetables and everything else? Why would I put this thing, why would I let this thing live? Let me know in the comments. Why would you let a popcorn tree live? Are you insane? <laughs> yes. Come along, more brassicas. And our lilies here are starting to pop. They're looking pretty good. They are going to bloom. Now I just put these in because they're beautiful, not because I'm gonna eat them or anything. These are growing around this mayhaw. I like to make little vignettes, right? You've got different types of trees and different flowers and different vegetables in different patches. So as I go down these rows, there's different things happening. It's like different neighborhoods. More chaya. These pretty, pretty cannas. They're, they're happily coming back. This little apple here is coming back very nicely. Looking good. Some stuff. When it just shows up, I let it grow like this dock. I had to check with my friend Elizabeth. It's like, this is dock, isn't it? We didn't have this in the tropics that I know of. <laughs> it's one of those things I know from pictures but don't normally see in the gardens. But when they came up, I said, look at that. That looks like a nutrient accumulator to me. That looks like something I want to keep. So I've just left it. 
I think it's pretty. This is going good here. You can see it's waking up here. The sap is rising up the tree. It has not woken up at the edges yet. I don't even want you to grow there, so move up. Move up here. Keep going up. Longer chill hours on some things than on other things. And then we have a big batch of potatoes right here. These potatoes might have been the ones I was sneaking potatoes out from the other day. Let's see if we got any potatoes in here. The potatoes want to form right around the base. Look at that. See that? So if I wanted to sneak a few little potatoes out, I could sneak a few, but I'm going to let them grow. That one fell off in my hand. Guess I have to eat it. Just don't eat them raw. We got some that were probably about as long as my thumb. Mostly small right now though, but they're coming in quick. There's that Robinson crab apple down here at the end. It's just starting to grow. I had to break off the buds lower down on the stem because I don't want it to grow low. I want it to grow from right here so I can grow things around the base of it. And you can just look down these rows. Here, these are the last two grocery rows. There are trees and put in zinnias and marigolds that are gonna be growing. There's more raspberries, there's more blueberries. There's apples and asparagus, raspberry, apricot. The apricot's like moving over, go that way. Blueberries and more potatoes, figs. It's kind of pretty, but I need to get in here and mulch. The uh, strawberries are starting to spread a little bit and they need to be mulched around too. They're not gonna like it when it gets hot. They are making strawberries very shortly here. I like doing this, but we've got to get the mulch on them. Now, speaking of mulch, this area here is four rows of potatoes, four different varieties of potatoes. We've got uh, Pontiac, Red Lasota, Kennebec, and Yukon Gold, but I need to get in the middle here and shovel some more soil up around the bases of these mounds. It's one of those jobs that requires shoveling. So I think you guys have had enough shoveling on this channel lately. Unless you want me to just shovel some more. I could do, you know, like just a, a real-time video of shoveling, shoveling dirt onto the potatoes. ASMR. Yeah, that'd be fun. You can tell where I had the Steve Solomon's mix. This collard is crazy. These peas are looking pretty nice. It's the best out of this whole mess here. But this area, there's really not much to show yet. These beds need to be reset and they need to be weeded and I'm kind of waiting for the yams to come up that I planted in here when the yams come up Then things will happen, but right now. I'm just uh, I'm not gonna worry about it, but over here I have been busy and Multiple people have said what happened to the terra preta bed? What's going on with the terra preta bed? Well, I mean it's not been that long These things don't happen overnight <laughs> But it is growing and I did, I mulched over the top with more of that debris from the woods. And the tomatoes are looking good. The brassicas are looking good. It looks rich to me. Something is chewing this tomato up. It's too much life. But these tomatoes here look just fine. So, Look at that. This is why we plant a wide variety of tomatoes. I've got all kinds of different varieties and mix them up. Some of them are going to be better off than others. That's the bed there. And then as you come down here, this area was all cover crop. And what I did was I just kind of hacked the cover crop down. And as I, as I look at it, I go, ah, oh, let's see, we'll take some of this here and we'll throw it down. And it's kind of keeping the ground covered and it's fixing nitrogen, and it's making biomass, and then 
it becomes mulch. So as these plants are getting bigger, and they start to get shaded out a little bit, I have been chopping up the cover. You can see how I did that here already. This was from maybe a week ago or so. And kind of come in here and go, oh, that, that could use a little more sunshine. So I've got this life coming onto it. And we'll see how it works for competition and everything. So far they seem to be growing just fine in there. But I, I kind of like it. I like all the life of it. I like how the bed is just this big mess of green. And I kind of want to see these uh, clovers bloom here because I like them. They're very pretty. But they're, I mean, look at this tomato is getting lost in the middle of this. There's a tomato in there. Oh man. I remember when uh, Rachel kind of first got into gardening with me more in North Florida and she said, I can't find where any of the food is in the gardens because you just make these incredible messes and I don't know what's food and what's, you know, a weed that you let grow or what's whatever. It's just this huge mess. And it was a huge mess because I would just take a bunch of stuff and throw it on the ground and chop things down and let things grow into the mess. Very disorganized. So I made some really nice little organized beds for my wife so she could have gardens that were under her control and she grew some really beautiful stuff. She grew some gorgeous broccoli and cabbages and things in those controlled beds. And I, I had my anarchy section over in another part of it, so look at that. That is a pretty tomato right there. And those are our transplants. We'll find out what variety of tomato it is. I didn't bother marking them once I put them in. I just mixed them all up, planted them all over. This bed over here I did an experiment with because I know that the I know that the cucumbers like ashes. So instead of chopping and dropping, I piled pine needles and leaves over this entire bed full of rye and clover and lit it on fire and burned the top of it off. And it added a lot of ashes to the soil, but it left, there's a lot of root mass in the ground here. See all those roots that are left from the cover crop. So I don't know if that was a great idea or not. Kind of a slash and char. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of burned it down and, and let it go. Put a little carbon in the soil there. But the cucumbers seem to like it. And uh, the pak choy and the brassicas don't seem to mind. But I did that at the same time as I did the other cover beds, just as an experiment. I was like, hey, can I clear this by just lighting it on fire? Maybe it's just an excuse to light stuff on fire, I don't know. I got one of these industrial paper shredders like you would put in a big office, and I've been putting all kinds of cardboard, and all of the paper scraps now are getting recycled into the compost, or like this, where I'm just putting them down as mulch. This pak choy right here is already bolting and I don't know why. I don't think it's been that warm. It's just been in the 70s and it already wants to bloom. So we may just have to cut it up and eat it. We'll see how it does. But these, this area of cucumbers and everything, these are getting mulched as I go. Kind of just go and throw this nice fluffy stuff. I like this industrial paper shredder. I bought it from Staples because it, uh, shreds like even big pieces of cardboard and I've broken a few paper shredders just trying to see how much stuff I can shred in it at one time and this one I've not broken it has a nice big hopper bin which I don't bother putting a bag in I don't need the plastic and I just I just bring it out to the garden and I dump dump it out here and it makes, it looks like confetti. It looks like these, these brassicas were all a bunch of returning heroes and we just buried them in confetti. I, I like to think it's encouraging to them. I like to think of them, we're having a parade. A parade of flavor! You know, like, ah, oh, it's great. They're just gonna randomly grab a, a nurse in the street and kiss her or something, I don't know. It's cool. This next bed here, <laughs> I planted velvet beans in here. This, this part is velvet beans, and I don't remember what I planted in the other part of it. But this side I burned, this side I chopped and covered with uh, mulch. It's like, I can't just stick to one thing. I know all of this is going to work. We just don't know how, or which one's gonna work the best. So we constantly, 
constantly shift and experiment. But all of it, anything, anything on this soil is good. I know it's gonna do fine. Over here we have a very messy bed of garlic and onions. Mostly garlic. I don't know how it'll do. Uh, a friend of mine brought me a bunch of garlic and said, do you wanna plant this? I bought it. How do you grow it? I said, well, you stick it in the ground in fall. So I stuck it in the ground in fall. I should really be weeding it more. The nice thing about having good soil is you grow lots of weeds. And now that the soil has been improved with Steve's mix and all kinds of other stuff, it's growing lots of weeds. And these weeds can be turned into compost or they can be fed to our chickens. The chickens will make short work of the weeds. I could just throw them in and they will devour them. We've got carrots in here. These little fat carrots. These are very, very sweet. Kind of a short fatty. I'm not sure which variety it is, but they've been very, very good. The kids like to eat them. Soil is so loose that weeding it is really simple. You just kind of kind of come through and pull them out. I can try to weed on hard ground, like for you guys that have thick clay. I remember when I was in Tennessee trying to pull up Bermuda grass stolons from garden beds and going, oh my gosh, like like they don't want to let go from the ground. They're they're just locked in. It's like concrete. And it's not like that when the soil is sandy. And this bed has been forked very nicely, so it's really easy, easy, easy to weed. You just come out and pull it all up in a very short period of time. There's some areas that I've actually just let go to weeds because I'm interested in the wildflowers that are coming up. I just like to see them. I guess I just like all growing plants, except for maybe Kogan grass and a vegetable that starts with a Z. There are these pretty little yellow orange blooms. This morning, this whole bed was covered in orange sprays and now they've all shut. And now it's later in the day and you can see these little seed heads. It's pretty little things. You can tell they're a aster like dandelions, but they're not a dandelion. They're really tiny. It's like dandelionus minor. There's these guys going here, and back here you can see there's some plantain growing. The wild plantain, which is a well-known medicinal. Plantain is easy to identify from its seed head. It comes up from the basil rosette down on the ground, and you've got this very obvious, that's plantain. Now this is not plantain like bananas and plantains, completely unrelated. That's the problem with common names. This is a, this is a well-known medicinal plant all over North America. It just shows up everywhere in broken ground. These are multiplier onions surrounded by these oxalis. Some people call these clover. They are not clover, they are oxalis. There's a wide variety of them, all different types. Sometimes they're called wood sorrel. They are edible leaves. These multiplier onions, they started as individual onions and now they are a bunch of onions and if we want an onion all I have to do is pull one out. I could get more of it but this here can go inside, be chopped up. We've got green onions. We have many 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 of them. If I wanted to do it really nicely I could just pull the whole bunch and divide them up and I could stick one back in I guess if I wanted to. But these are the ones that were fed with Steve's mix and they have been very healthy and happy. They have a great flavor. But even the ones that we didn't give Steve's mix, you could see they're not as big, they're not as dense, but they're still growing. These only had a little bit of composted cow manure. Both beds had some composted cow manure, but the ones with Steve's mix had all of those micronutrients as well. And Man, the weeds the last few weeks have suddenly just shown up in mass. But you can see that's not much of a result. Some of them are dividing, making a few onions. 
like this one, but they're not nearly as big and thick or as tall as the ones that were fed with the micronutrient mix, which is what you would expect. But they actually did much better. Some of the stuff that I didn't feed anything to or fed very little to has done pretty much nothing. So uh, I get the idea that these multiplier onions are really good for this climate, but you could, I mean, look at the height. The height difference is a good six inches or maybe as much as a foot in some spots. They're trying to reach, but I mean, look at, like here's a, this is a tall clump right here. And if you look over at the tall clumps over here, there's a definite difference. That's pretty good. So that's what's going on in the gardens right now. Just a bit of a long tour, but there's a lot happening here. This is like, I don't know, 8,000 square feet or more of gardens and lots of bits and pieces I didn't even get to show you, like the corn coming up or the new trellis that I built or the grapes. But hey, we can do more videos. This is YouTube. We have to do more videos or we become irrelevant. Speaking of that, give me a like, a thumbs up, uh, hit the bell, and I never quite get it right. Anyhow, you know what to do. Thanks for watching and I appreciate you guys, and stay tuned as we just are getting into this garden. This is barely getting started. This is barely getting started, and it's going to be amazing as the season goes on. Catch y'all next time, and until then, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again on a fruit salad spoon